hopefully we are now back, um, presuming Twitch is cooperating, uh, and we can actually go ahead and launch Labrador 8. Uh, it appears that Twitch is in fact cooperating. So, uh, that was, uh, I apologies, my apologies for the break uh, in this episode. Um, we're going to go ahead and fly Labrador 8. Um, so, we will load up to the pad. Uh, I put in those two remain the remaining uh, unskilled uh, engineer and scientist, uh, and we, we still have Eloise Martel as the, as the command pilot. Um, so we are now going to go ahead and launch Labrador Eight. Uh, the nice thing is that we are lucking out in that it is going to be a day launch to the moon. That never happens. Okay, we're warping ahead to daylight. So you actually get to see this launch vehicle in the flesh. With its short and fat first stage, it's very tubby second stage, and it's somewhat leaner third stage. Uh, admittedly, the only other launch... it's... it's... Uh, first stage, of course, is that width simply because it needs the area to have all those nozzles. Um, admittedly, the only stage in real life to have flown with those nozzles was the N1, and it was even shorter and fatter. Uh, so, whatever. Uh, if we look, you can see that the sun has now passed down behind the vehicle assembly building, and it's casting a shadow. Uh, we are now... Let's see... T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, engine start, 2, one and lift off. Roll program is go. We have aligned. Uh, let's finish aligning. We have good light on all seven engines. And it looks like things are running somewhat slower than real time. Yeah, at about we're running at about two thirds real time. Um, presumably because of the particles and the seven engines all running request resource checks and all sorts of fun stuff. Um, hopefully, 1.2 will solve those issues, uh, assuming Sarvian uses shuriken particles for the the um, smoke screens particles. I mean, he's been dying to do that for a while, and we are going to 5.4 for 1.2, so he'll be able to use shuriken. Now, if memory serves, um, we want to burn right until just about one kilometer per second, and then we'll head back due east, and that should align us pretty much perfectly with the plane of the moon. Spamming to log? No. Nothing spamming to log. That's nice. So, this is late evening. Um, it's by the standards of the time, that would not be during daylight saving time if memory serves, which means that it's 23 minus 5, which is 18, so it's 6.21 p.m. Uh, I don't know whether it's actually the 21st of March or not. Um, and this won't tell us, will it? No, it just gives us the day number. 
So 80 days into that year. Um, okay, we are at 1 minute 45 seconds burn. We have about 45 seconds stage time remaining. At 2 minutes and 10 seconds, we're going to cut off the center engine to reduce G-loading on the crew. Five seconds. G load increasing. We're hitting 3.5 G's. In center engine cutoff, we've gone back to 3 G's. I have not been paying attention. We should have gone back due east a while ago. We'll go back due east now. I really need to make a script handle this. Um. When next I remember to mention this to Agathorn or do it myself, there should be a way to have that report 1962 slash month slash day there instead of dash 80, which is the day count, which is not really useful to anyone. And we have first stage cutoff. So stage and ignite the second stage. Pitch up to correct attitude. Things are looking acceptable right now, so we're going to go ahead and jettison our abort system. Off it goes. So far, we appear to have been failure-free. Most all of our engines are at or close to 10,000 data units, so that's good. Everything's fine so far with the crew. And we're basically launching into night. The further east we go, the later it becomes. So effectively, the later the sun is, the sun is setting lower and lower and lower. Past three kilometers per second inertial. Uh, sorry. That's confusing, <laughs> um, because when I, in that sense, I am using inertial, I am using inertial in the sense of we are in the inertial reference frame rather than a rotating reference frame. Uh, the other sense I could be using inertial is I could be talking about uh, velocity changes, you know, the inertial frame of the craft itself, and in that, we have, we're only up to 2,900 meters per second surface speed because, of course, we started at 400, whatever, whatever the, the rotation velocity was. Um, so that can be slightly confusing, and I will try to use orbit and surface rather than, than confusing. I also have to look up, I can't remember whether Earth-centered Earth, which, uh, which of those two schemes Earth-centered Earth-fixed describes. But, anyway. Okay, so... The sun hasn't noticeably been getting low on the horizon, but it looks like the ocean to the east of us is fairly dark already. Because, obviously, we're now rather higher than we were, so the sun looks rather higher than it would be if we were on the ground.
All right, so we're coming up on the time when we'll want to start pitching down. I think we'll start pitching down now. Because remember last time we ended up in a 200 kilometer parking orbit and that was less than perfect. Two minutes burn time remaining on this stage. tragic, of course, that because the moon is on rails, we don't have accurate um, precession for the moon, which means that we won't have historic lunar launch windows. Um, that's fairly sad. Alright, it looks like we, we pitched down maybe a little early, but whatever. It'll be fine. seconds to Apogee. We're at one minute and ten seconds remaining mark on the stage. And then we'll have a somewhat short burn on the following stage. Okay, now our time to Apogee is increasing so we can pitch down slightly more. We're coming up on land alignment. We are actually slightly under the inclination of the moon, which means that we went too far south. That's understandable. Um, actually, you know what? We're going to keep rise, raising our inclination slightly. No, that's making it fall. We'll have acceptable alignment. Okay, we've pitched down quite a bit. And coming up on burnout. Oh, and we lost... third stage. Alright. We will be at ex an acceptable difference in planes. Uh, we're going to want to pitch up a little bit. Not quite that much. Just about that much, I think. And align with our orbital plane. That's fairly good alignment. We're going to fall past Apogee slightly. That's okay. Fallen past Apogee. Pitching up. We want to come right a little bit more. Keep the relative inclination as low as possible, under 0.1 degrees. And we're approaching circularization and uh, insertion. Pitch is fine. Almost there.
There we go. We have reached insertion. Completed our orbital insertion. We have oodles of spare delta V. Now we need to create a Hohmann transfer. If memory serves, about that was correct. Um, wrong way. Create our loop de loop. It's in 12 minutes. That is still a high periapsis. 134, and our return is. That looks nice. All right, so we're going to have to vary the timing of that slightly. And all right, that is acceptable. So let us go ahead and we're going to want to, it's going to be a five minute burn is my guess. If not five minutes, approximately five minutes. So we're going to go ahead and warp until we're about two minutes and 30 seconds short. Uh, I mean, we can also, uh, yes, that's probably a more plausible solution. Uh, we should start dumping our excess liquid oxygen. so that we have a shorter burn time. Okay. And let's dump a little bit of the liquid hydrogen as well. Just increase our delta V a bit, appreciably. All right. Now, we want to, oh yes, and let's turn that off, because I always forget. Uh, align with the node. And warpity warpity warp. three minutes. We said it'll be about, so we're looking at actually a two minute, pretty much precisely a uh, two minutes and 10 seconds before. Two minutes, 30 seconds, 29, 28. So, we are now out of warp. Doesn't matter that we don't have connection because we have human beings aboard. Ollage and bingo. We will perform our burn. We are well and truly on the night side of the planet. You can see the stars all around us. The only tiny little bit of home is that shining light on that capsule. And we shall see just how reasonably close
this takes us. Um, I'm not going to risk any kind of polar lunar orbit. I think that's a recipe for tragedy because of life support supplies. Uh, that reminds me. We need to turn off the life support supplies in the capsule so that they drain last. Um, we also should... I should probably set them all on stage priority. Um, stage priority flow instead of all vessel, if they're not already. For that reason. Uh, 30 seconds to the node. Looks like the timing is going to be just about correct. Yeah, so far this is shaping up to be a bang-on repeat of the last mission. I mean, the last mission went well, so... Um, and this time it's another three crew members chance. Um, and of course we are gaining data on these RL-10A33s. Uh, but they start more reliable than the basic ones anyway. So we're... we don't have to worry quite so much. Let's see if we end our burn exactly at the same time past the node we started it. Um, that would be good. So it looks like we started a hair too early, perhaps. But it looks like we're going to end up 20 meters per second short, which is weird, I guess because of the steering losses. That's really not awesome. It means I guess we'll have to burn the command module to finish that maneuver. I'm not sure why. I guess I dumped too much liquid oxygen, but I mean, I assumed that... Well... Doesn't actually matter. Let's go ahead and... Complete this burn. Alright, so it looks like this burned too long. Let's go ahead and extend our solar panels and antennas. That was that too much? Not quite enough. Oops. Let's
let's correct a little bit more here. And we get a nice lunar... Whoa, too much. Uh... And I guess we'll just blip the throttle slightly. That looks better. That is acceptable. That leaves our periapsis too high for a free return that re-enters, but um, we verified that this all works, so that may be about as good as it's getting. Um, what maneuver could we do to try... I, I don't think we want to expend really more delta-v trying to fix that. Um, so we'll just accept this. It's fine. That's in only... Oh, look at how nice that... That actually, that tells us when it is, too. Awesome. So, just shy of three days. So, this was a slightly less energetic transfer than the prior ones we've done. So, let's go ahead and... How are we doing for alignment in terms of solar power? Let's warp on out. And we'll align here. That will do. What did that do to this? That brought it down a bit low. All right, so we'll have to correct. That's fine. All right. So outwards we go. Let's go ahead and warp until we're in the lunar SOI. Oh, I forgot to mark the, the stage's debris. Well, I'll do it from the tracking station later, I guess. Okay, we are now in the Lunar Sphere of Influence. There's the Earth behind us, and ahead of us, somewhere around here, is the Moon. We're still quite high, though, so maybe that's why we're not seeing it. Oh, no, it's because... Let's go to Locked. We're aligned, so it's over here, if I've... Yep, there it is. Awesome. Okay. So we're going to stay on free camera because I'm tired of everything shifting around. So let's go ahead and create a circularization burn at the next periapsis. That maneuver is in 11 hours and 31 minutes. And, yeah, so we're going to warp until we're fairly near it. Okay. Oh, no, we don't want to warp that far because this is going to be quite an expensive capture burn uh, in terms of time. Although you'll note that it's cheaper in Delta V, and that's because we did not have as, high, as energetic a transfer, and it took us longer to get here. It's going to be three days before we capture the moon, rather than two and a half. Um, all right, so we need to estimate how long it will take. I estimate that it will take six and a half minutes to burn 
900 meters per second delta V, uh, which means we want to start 315 ahead of the node. Now, normally, normally MechJab would handle that, but MechJab has problems with this craft and just immediately starts boring, burning. Okay, so let's align with the maneuver. Seven minutes. And so now we're aligned with the maneuver. We're still four minutes from when we actually want to start our burn. So let's warp on in. Five, four, Okay, 326, we figured 315 was about right to start, so we'll execute for MechJab at 315. Bang on. Okay. And there we go. Now, it estimates 6 minutes and 44 seconds. Um, but our thrust weight ratio is going to increase throughout the burn, so it'll probably be closer to 6 minutes and 10 seconds, so we might have started a hair early. But then, uh, happily, uh, Mechjev appears to have worked this time, so it didn't start immediately at 210. is quite a long maneuver. We do, however, get to admire the pretty moon below us, because the last time we inserted it, we were inserting on the night side, and we departed on the night side, of the, the dark side of the moon. So this time, however, we're doing it under the full glare of the sun. We won't really gain any science from this mission unless we do something fairly intriguing, such as changing our plane up very high, performing in an orbit, getting low science there. Looks like we wouldn't even be low science because we wouldn't, um, yeah. We'd have to circularize at that, and then we would have to wait a full, like, seven days to be in position to, um, do a lunar return from a polar orbit. The advantage of coming in aligned with the orbital plane of the moon is that we can depart literally at any time throughout the moon's orbit. If we had an orbit that was inclined with respect to the moon's orbital plane, we could only depart when our alignment, for example, see this orbit right here? This orbit is close enough that we could do an ejection and come out like this. It'd be more expensive, but we could survive it. But if our orbit were aligned like this, Ah, uh, we would not really be able to perform an ejection. Uh, we have captured, and we're currently lowering on down. So, basically, if we were aligned like this, we'd have to wait 7 to 10 days or whatever until we had moved sufficiently around the moon's orbital plane that this angle this way would be m closer aligned to the, Earth's, the, the moon's orbital track. Uh, we avoid that problem by coming in aligned like this. So either we could pay... I mean, obviously we could still return. We would um, escape going in this direction and then burn radial to refine our... Um, 
Earth Perigee, but that would be rather more expensive. Well, we've almost burned half the Delta V required for this maneuver. Not quite, but almost. Um, yes. In RO, everything takes time. These are not like the 30-second capture burns you might see in Kerbal Space Program. This is realism. Are we getting enough electric charge to keep the capsule fed? Yes, we are. That's good. I would hate for us to be using battery power with this alignment. Ah, uh, so that's interesting. Interestingly enough, that's a hidden advantage of using fuel cells, is that you don't, you can basically, or RTGs, as we saw with our, our Jupiter and Saturn probes, you don't have to worry about alignment. You can align however you like, and you'll still get power. Um, all right, we're now passing perigee, uh, is pericylene? Almost. We're still, oh, we're still 40 seconds before it. We just happen to be lined up with it. Um, Okay, I'm going to recreate that maneuver because I don't want to be burning negative despite us already going negative. Now we started with 10 minutes and 40 second burn time. I estimated it would be about 6 minutes and 30 seconds, 620 or so. Let's see whether that was correct. Um, And I think we had 1940, and we were burning 853 to capture. And let's see if that estimate was also correct. Yes. Uh, sometimes this indicator is not quite telling the truth. It's telling the truth if you perform an instantaneous burn. It's not telling the truth if you perform a non-instantaneous burn, and obviously everything is not instantaneous. So this six-minute burn that was supposedly only 853, it's probably going to cost more than that because we were burning above and below retrograde. Hmm. Almost there, almost there. Well, it looks like the Delta V estimate is going to be very close to correct. Uh, is the elapsed time going to be correct? No, I overestimated how long it would take to perform that burn. It looks like it's actually only going to take six minutes to perform the burn. Yep. So, alright, so the Delta V was about 50 meters per second off. The burn to my burn time estimate, I overestimated. It actually only took six minutes to perform that burn. All right, so now we're... Uh, oh, that's the other problem, of course. Let's... Well, doesn't actually matter. We can, we can have some level of eccentricity. Let's go ahead and align... Like that. Keep our solar panels in full alignment. We'll look down at the moon. Now, we need to orbit around the moon for 20 hours, according to this contract, if memory serves. Uh, we can minimize the first space station contract. It's not relevant to our existence. 19 hours, 57 minutes. OK. So we're going to want, let's go to map view so that we don't 
see flickering moon. We're going to want about three days and 20 hours. Three days and five hours. So far, everything's going fine. They're looking out the windows, watching the moon, performing some experiments. Three days and eight hours. Not going to bother to do any EVAs this trip. There's no real need for it. Three days and ten hours. Eleven. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Slowly, slowly. Fifteen hours. Okay, I believe we have now fulfilled the time requirement of our contract. Let's go ahead and look. Yes. Now we can go ahead and land or splash down on Earth. All right, let's look at what an ejection might be like. Uh, we want to return from a moon. Let's try 150. That gives us 704, that's not correct. 100 gives us 651, that's not correct. 20 gives us 566, that's also not correct. 0 gives us 545. All these seem not exactly correct. Let's add some extra delta V so it's a fast trip home. Somewhere around there, and we want to Just advance by a minute at a time. Nope, wrong way. How long is that going to be? Three days and seven hours. Is that coming in prograde or retrograde? That's a gr ah, that's a good question. All right, let's create this node this time. And so we want to add ten to it, and then we want to ah, I have to focus on the Earth, I guess because it's, it's hard to see. Also, unhelpfully, <laughs> because we, you know, that side of the moon was light, this side of the Earth is dark. How it works. All right, let's create that return. That has that weird thing, so let's... Increase it a bit, and now inch by inch, let's get an acceptable Turn height, that's in 3 days and 11 hours. 106. 65. 24. All right. 44. 24. 28. 30. All right, now we have an appropriate maneuver. 
Now the question, that's in three days and 11 hours. Um, so I think that will end up in the ocean again, happily, because that's in three days and 11 hours, which means that this will be rotated. What we're seeing right now will be on the far side of the Earth. Uh, then three days, it'll do three days rotation. All right, so it looks like we will have an ocean return in the uh, middle of the Pacific. Excellent. Let's go ahead and Let's see, 855 meters per second out of 1,001 meters per second. It's probably going to be about four minutes and... About four minutes. I'd say it's about four minutes. So we'll, we'll want to start two minutes before the maneuver, I think. And we, yeah, we just passed it. So that's fine. Um, oops, I warped the wrong way. We want to warp around to here. Our final lap around the moon. Okay, maneuver is in three minutes. Let's orient and prepare to return home from the moon after a successful lunar orbital mission. Align with the maneuver. Now, we estimated about two minutes even. I'm going to actually do maybe 205. So we'll kick out a little early. Let's perform some ullage and execute. All right. Looks like, again, we were a little bit early. Because MechJeb wasn't going to wait. All right. Now let's execute again. Yeah, it does look like it has fan blades or something. We do need all eight. We certainly need all eight for the for those dark side times. Ah, uh, resources. We interesting. It didn't regenerate after we did all that staging. <laughs> okay. Well, whatever. Um. Looking good. Looking good. Okay. We have two lunar Gs of acceleration. So we, we're, we have an acceleration about three meters per second squared. This has been a highly effective spacecraft, I have to say. Done everything we've asked of it, and it really doesn't mass all that much. Uh, we would really have had to scrimp and save an awful lot more if we were using the Mark I-2 pod. Uh, we probably only could have done, done lunar flyby missions, you know, circumlunar missions on free returns. We probably couldn't have tossed enough of a service module to actually do a lunar insertion and then return on the payload capacity that we had with that launch vehicle. We also couldn't have easily launched it with a catapult to low Earth orbit because, of course, the catapult is only three meters wide in the upper stage, <laughs> and the Mark I-2 pod is about four meters wide. Okay. 
well over half the delta V experiment. Um, past the node. We're going to gradually drift on up. Okay, and so other than the crew which performed the 14-day record-breaking duration mission, uh, this crew will have spent the longest time in space of any of our space program's astronauts. Because we're not going to get home until probably day eight. Maybe day seven and a half, I don't know. We'll see. this maneuver continue. And there we go. Now let's see what that did for us for Earth. What is that? 174. So we need to burn a little bit more, which we're fine-tuning on RCS. That looks about right. Now... Away we go. We are getting enough electric charge, I believe. Yes, we are. We're still charging. So we don't have to reorient at all, which is great. So, on out we go, out of the Lunar SOI. Our return is in three days and eight hours. Uh, so yes, this will, this will be another longer than a week mission. I think it'll actually have about the same mission elapsed time as Labrador 7, just differently spread. It was a longer transfer out and a faster transfer home. Let's see if it will let us do this. No. It will only give us our own information. So we'll fix that at the tracking station. We're actually, yes, I love how close we are to rendezvous with this, the stage that, um, the stage that bring us. All right, so we're gonna warp to about here. Down we come. And if memory serves, about 400 kilometers altitude is where I took over control and started rejiggering things. Okay, we're back in medium Earth orbit. Oh, bang on, 400 kilometers. That's nice. All right, so now we want to switch to surface mode and reorient retrograde. We're only 300 kilometers up, lowering fast. Okay, we have decent alignment now, so now we're going to go ahead and unlock the life support in the capsule. And we're going to go ahead and stage away the service module. Bye-bye. And we're going to go ahead and 
turn on the at RCS, turn on descent mode. Now we're going to pause the game while we set MechJeb up with roll on and pitch off. Let's resume and let MechJeb finish aligning us. We'll stage one more time to arm the parachute. And down we go. This will be a fairly high G descent, sadly. Um, but I want to get this on the ground as fast as possible. This episode has gone on a long enough time. And, um, yeah, we're, co we're actually, we're coming in, I think, faster than the last time by a bit. Uh, as I was saying before, the transfer back this time is somewhat faster, but the transfer out was slower. So we, we've, we're not transferring back fast enough to be on an escape trajectory. We're not up in the 11 kilometer per second range. So we're, the, our heat shielding will be fine. But, um, all right, let's see, where is this? There's the service module. We can see it 1.7 kilometers away. We are now in the atmosphere. Come screaming in at over a kilometer per second synchrite. We'll probably peak at about 6.5 Gs, maybe? I don't know. Let's see. Yep, there, I was just about to say, it's going to start exploding soon, and beaten to the punch by the booms. Okay. Now our capsule is heating up enough that it's starting to glow. You know, that, that black body radiation. We're really starting to slow down a bit now. Now the flames are really kicking in. Past 1G. Sixty kilometers. We're still above ten kilometers per second. 5 G's. Gonna get ready on the roll maneuver. 6 G's, 6.3 G's, 6.4 G's. Lowering again. I'm gonna let it skip back up a little bit before I flip inverted because I don't want the G's to get too severe. Alright, now let's flip inverted. We should still be low enough that that will work. If I hadn't have done this flip, we might have skipped well out of the atmosphere, gone up to like 300 kilometers and come back, and that would not have been fun. Alright, so... Our climb rate is lowering, because we're inverted, so the lift is pushing us down. 60 kilometers... The g-force is lowering. 100 meters per second climb rate. 800 kilometers apogee. We're slowly, slowly, slowly inching upwards. And we're going to level off in just a sec. And then I'm going to want to roll back the way we were before. Okay. Here goes the roll. We'll roll back up level. So now we're sticking up here where the G's are lower. How are we doing on Ablator? We still have plenty of Ablator. Amazing what happens when you come in under 11 kilometers per second rather than over 11 kilometers per second. That Labrador 5 was really outside the design parameters, because remember we came in at 11.3 or more. No, we must have come in at more than that, because I think by the time it blew up it was down to 11.3 or something crazy. Um, all right, so this is fairly gentle, because we're actually going to skip up past 70 kilometers now. Yes. Never let it be said that I don't care about my, my astronauts. I wanted them to have a, a lower G re-entry than they otherwise might, even if it's going to take a little longer. But 
we're doing a full skip on up to s coming to 73 kilometers and climb rate is still increasing so we're, we're skipping up fairly high we still got plenty of NTO and MMH I think actually I'm going to roll inverted again because we can why not Okay, that will decrease our climb rate quite severely. We'll lower our apogee again, and we'll start coming back down again quite soon. We've got the RCS propellants, we might as well. No harm in it. We are, this is the glory of actually flying a controlled lifting reentry, is that we really have a fair amount of control over things. Uh, and as expected, it looks like we're right in the middle of the Pacific. Uh, that's Hawaii. So, yep. And there's Va there's Vandy. Good old Viberg. South America's down here. So, yep, we're still in the midst of the Pacific. Seems awesome. All right. Now we want to roll again. We'll turn off the autopilot and let it just roll on its own. Give it a little bit of a helping hand. Okay. There we go. Downwards in we come. We're at only 6.3 kilometers per second. Surface relative. And we're starting to bite again. Down almost to 60 kilometers. Let's see what the peak G is this round. Not really using much ablator now, now that we're quite slow. You can tell how 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 expensive the lunar reentry was compared to low Earth orbit reentry. Which, or even a suborbital one, which is the speed we're having now, we're using next to no ablator, whereas in the first minute we use like 250. G's are increasing quite slowly.
So far, so good. Yeah, and the Gs are holding quite consistently. Now, see, if this were a low Earth orbit re-entry, we could hold the Gs right there for pretty much the whole re-entry uh, and have a very, very gentle return to Earth. You don't need wings for a gentle re-entry. You just need lift. All right, now they're increasing a bit. Approaching two G's. Two point one G's. Getting a little bit more of a G loading, but we're just about out of velocity to dump. So we don't have to worry about it. Okay. Settling in. Long reentry. But fairly gentle one for a lunar reentry. subsonic okay getting there just doesn't want to slow down that much took Mechjeb off. We're going to keep a line manually for a little bit of the rest of the time. We are now subsonic. Let's go ahead and turn descent mode off. Let our roll. Okay, 
Now, let's go ahead and dump the toxic MMH and NTO. We don't have much left. Gone. Stop. Stop. Okay. And now we're passing 12 kilometers. Sorry. Yeah, this is about 40,000 feet. We are well and truly subsonic. We're at approximately terminal velocity. And now we just wait for the chutes to open. We'll speed up time a bit. They, the drogue opens at 4.5 kilometers. There we go. Can't see a thing. Drogue fully opens and the main deploys. And drogue is cut. Main fully deploys, and downwards we go. Nice stately five meters per second. Five hundred meters elevation above sea level. Four hundred. Three hundred. Two hundred. One hundred. Back to one X warp as we near the ocean. Twenty meters and splash down at 7:57 a.m. UTC or GMT, excuse me. Uh 29th presumably March 1962, although I think actually it's the 27th due to leap years. Whatever. We're going to go ahead and recover. We got a tiny bit of science still. We got 8,400 funds back for our return, the capsule. And gained a lot of experience for orbiting the moon and returning home. And we completed our human orbit one LLO. Technically, we only had to send one astronaut, but we sent three, because why not? All right, so with that successful completion, we're inching ever closer to the $2 billion that we'll need to upgrade the R&D facility and be able to unlock new nodes. Um, so, yeah, once once we actually complete that those the, the Jupiter flyby, which we will complete fairly soon, um, then we'll we'll accept that contract to scan Venus, high res, Mars high res, and perhaps do a Phobos and Deimos lander uh, in our Mercury uh, orbit mission, and that will also give us a ton of science at Mercury because we've only done a flyby before; we haven't done an orbital. Um, so yeah, we also have coming up quite soon the. Uh, Eight days, we'll have our test launch of the uprated trebuchet launch vehicle. Uh, and then we can go ahead and start. We'll also get a cryogenic, we'll, we'll get cryogenic tanks in two days. Um, so yeah, we've got a lot of stuff to look forward to. So, nope, this is saying, in fact, it's, it's March 29th. It looks like leap years, I wonder if for some reason the C-sharp date time class isn't taking leap years into account. I'm somewhat confused. 
Uh, yeah, fairly sure that something funky is going on. But, whatever. Um, I think we're going to call it quits here. Thank you everyone for watching. I'm sorry that this was cut into two parts. Um, but I hope it was still enjoyable. I hope that uh, it was helpful. I learned something from it. And I hope to see you again soon. Thanks and bye-bye.